Calm down, Amelia, calm down. She's just finishing her denouement. The audience is captivated, completely awestruck. You can see them, really. Awestruck. Oh, awestruck, but that's good. Yes, I think I've done it. Selfridge Thomason does it again. A smash hit. Selfridge stuns the old Vic into silence. A sleeping lion awake. The Alpha once more. Pride of the British theatre. I can see the headlines already, Amelia. I mean, it really is me, isn't it? Big time selfish strikes again. Yes, Mr. Selfridge, he, he sounds like he does. Believe me, Amelia, I don't have to remind you how long I've been doing this, do I? No, no, you don't. And I don't have to remind you how short a time you've been doing this, do I? No, no, <laughs> And I don't have to remind you that that entire time you've been working under me, do I? <laughs> under you. What? <laughs> Just strange work choice. Is it? Under me? You've been working under me? Oh, she's your assistant. Oh, no, 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 no. You're not my assistant, are you? Oh, well, I... You're... You're what the stagehand is to the leading lady. Minus the saucy affair that breaks up the cast. You're... You're my stagehand. Oh, yeah, stagehand. Definitely mine is the affair. Ah, yes, yes, indeed. Um, you're not really my type, Amelia. Oh, you're not my... No. Doesn't sound like either one of you going to be ending up hungry to draft or does it? <clears throat> anyway, the audience is absolutely fascinated. I mean, just listen to this. Still <laughs> silent. <laughs> exactly. They'll have to scrape them out of the seats. Might as well start the celebration earlier. Yeah, that'll be the whole time. You can tell when a show is going to be a smash right before it's thin. This one, for example, this is going to be huge. This is going to run and run and rerun for years. You can just tell. You can just tell. Of course you can. I mean, everyone said the Titanic was unsinkable five minutes before it crashed. <laughs> well, bully for them. All well, that ice and they're done for my drink. I feel like dancing. What? I said I feel like some dancing. Do you want me to help show tunes, or...? No, I said, I want to see some dancing. <laughs> you want me to dance? For you? Come on, chop chop! I, I don't want to dance. Amelia, you're not my assistant, but you're making this celebration positively dreary. I said I want to see some dancing. Why can't you do it? Because I asked you. <laughs> he asked you. Come on, throw some shapes. <laughs> come on, commence with the merriment, the dancing, the... Go on. <laughs> there you go! Well, it's not really dancing, is it? It's more like a sad bear in a Russian zoo. But it'll do, Amelia, it'll do. Selfridge! Selfridge! Selfridge, <laughs> you have a visitor. Philippa! Philippa, my Gabriel, my Hermes, my holiest of producers. Dance with us, Philippa. Don't stop dancing, Amelia. Come on, dance and celebrate one of the most successful shows ever seen. Get your hand off me! Stupid. Your show just finished. I figured. I couldn't hear the ovation and encore because of all the merriment we've been having in here. Don't stop dancing, we're still celebrating. Celebrating what? Exactly. Oh, don't go all coy or worse, all professional on me, Philippa. The show's success, that's what we've been celebrating. Would you keep dancing? You really don't need to keep dancing. The show's success? Have you an idea how the audience have taken it? I checked, actually. They were emotional implosions, every single one of them. It was like they were thinking thoughts not even Aristotle had thought of before. Or perhaps, like Aristotle, they were just all dead. You're like the man steering the Titanic. Like that the... reminds me no ice for my drink. Don't stop dancing while I'm gone. That out there, Selfridge, was a horror show! What did you just say? Selfridge, that production was possibly the worst thing I have ever seen! What? The audience! Was stunned, yes. Stunned by how god awful that show was. If you had shown those people a full recording of the Titanic sinking, all the waterlogged bodies and all the families crying, they would have been less stunned and then would ask to trade places with the waterlogged bodies instead of existing in the same world as your play. I mean, 
is, yes, um, it's a revival of Oedipus Rex. Um, I thought I'd really hit the deeper themes. The original is good as it is. It's bleak, it's brooding, it shocks the audience into silence because of the story. Yours added a new monologue for Oedipus to end the play, uh. in which he discusses how loving one's own mother, i.e. incest, should not, in fact, be a damnable offence because it is uncontrollable. <laughs> he compares it to homosexuality before saying if his mother wasn't now dead, he would enjoy a romantic relationship with her for life. Oh, and let's not forget the cherry. Oedipus then proceeds to juggle his own eyes that we not long ago watched him gouge out whilst, let me add, moaning in an increasingly aroused tone. <laughs> Selfridge, what the fuck was that? What does it even mean? Well, he's a strange one, Oedipus. No? It's... It's absurdist. It's absurdist? Yeah. Are you... absurdist? No. No, no, Selfridge. It's not absurdist. It's absurd. It's... It's... It's shit. It's just the most insane fucking demon dream shit! You fucked it! You absolutely fucked it! Johnny! His own eyes! That he's torn out of his face! Johnny! Amelia? Amelia, you, you can stop dancing now. <laughs> <laughs> this show was to save yourself, Selfridge. You realise that? Because your shows have been going down this trend of audience alienating nonsense for some time. Yes? You are aware that your shows have just kept getting worse. Yes? Ratings plummeting, ticket sales plummeting, like patients plummeting. You can dislodge your head from your fatty, hemorrhoid laced anus and realise that, Selfridge, yes? <clears throat> this. This is your worst one, though. And when you needed it most, when you needed it most, you must be fucking the most chronically deranged fucking washed up fuck time director I have ever met! You're the fucking <laughs> That! That's Amelia. She's my protege. She's. Um, she's. Amelia. She works under me. <laughs> Fucking hope not, you crush her. Do you understand what is happening here? That audience, who by the way were made up of critics and actors and directors and producers and God knows who else, have fled the place as if the stage were on fire because of your piss poor writing. The stage could probably do with a fire actually. Spiritually cleanse itself of the massive shit you've just taken on it. You are fucked. No man has ever been so fucked. Bill Clinton, as he exited Monica Lewinsky, was not as fucked as you are right now. I think. I think. You're lying. What? I went out there. The audience were fascinated by my work. They were eating out of my fingertips. I think you are just jealous. Jealous? <laughs> jealous? Selfridge, let me tell you something. I work with a lot of people. A lot of them do the same job as you. Almost all of them if not all of them, are better than you, more successful than you, or they're younger and have more potential than you. If I was going to be jealous of anyone, it would be one of them. But I don't need to be, because they are making me money. You're not. Also, your face is bad, and they have nice faces. I'm not jealous of you. I just don't like you. I think you're all talk and an idiot past his prime. This 
was your one chance to change all that, to save yourself. And for some demented reason, I believed you. I actually fucking believed you. Fuck knows what you put in my drink that day. You know, you told me this would be something the likes of which I'd never seen. Well, you were right there, I can tell you that. You know, I wish I had been Oedipus. At least then I wouldn't have had to see the play. Oh, but of course, if I had been Oedipus, I'd have had to learn the stupid fucking lines you wrote. You know, I really, I really thought he's had success in the past, so much success, maybe this will be like the good old days. Well, maybe the good old days I was reminiscing over were just the ones where I hadn't met you yet. Because guess what? You fucked it. This is who you are now. Selfishness. A failure. And I don't work with failures. Find someone else to put on the shit your mind turns out. We're done. Good luck with the views. Sightseeing. 
passengers with access to a window on the right hand side of the plane look now, you would like to see clouds. As much else. If there weren't any clouds, they would like to be seen in the ocean. That great blue thing look at. Passengers on the left hand side of the plane look now, they would see me parachuting away from the plane. <laughs> As Josephine sat in on my lap and I stared into her eyes, I realised that none of this is important if I don't have to love my own wife. <laughs> so I have made the decision to abandon the flight and return to her immediately in a romantic endeavour of filmic proportions. The other pilots in the cockpit I have had to knock out. You may experience some further turbulence. As pilot of this flight, I would remind passengers to not attempt to undo their seatbelts unless the sign indicating they must be fastened is off. <laughs> Josephine will now demonstrate the question of being aside. Also, you will not be able to undo them. I love all your seatbelts. <laughs> don't ask why, don't ask how, because I can't remember. <laughs> I understand that this may be alarming information, but don't worry. I'm very capable of the parachute. The wind is mild. A member of the hosting team should be bringing around peanuts. Just peanuts for your peanuts now. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> we attempt to aeroplane to the night sky like shootings. <laughs> <laughs> we need to wish right now. Wish right now. Wish. And someone is above us, above us. Help! Help! I'm afraid I can't help you. I'm all the way down here, and I have things to do. In fact, I'm just on my way to visit one of London's many fine, internationally famous museums. Good morning. Uh, everyone, please remain calm. The content. 
contents of this box are dead. This is the museum of dead stuff. Let me out of here! I know you can hear me! I'm not dead! This is horrific! Let him out! It's all right. Dead, 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 dead,
Uh, joking. <laughs> Just joking. Oh. <laughs> Fight! 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 Oh, a drink for you, sir. Ordered and paid for by that gentleman. Just over there. Are you?
That's really that's but no. Thank you. Come on! One, two! Oh! <laughs> Stop flirting with the locals and listen to me. Exactly. Did you call me here in such a hurry, Alfred? Well, you're my assistant. You're meant to be here all the time to wipe my cock. I mean, not the cock. Shush, 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 the idea orchard is heavy with plums. Ideas, ideas. <laughs> to remind everyone that I've still got it. No one has ideas like me. No one grows peaches like me. I thought there were plums. I, what? Your orchard metaphor. I, I thought there were plums. The ideas. It doesn't matter. It's making us look a couple of lemons. Stalking body here, No, no, it wasn't melons. It was, it was plums. Anyway, mantelon. That's French, you know. I have ideas for plays. Plays I'm going to put on. To master. To turn into master pieces. Oh, has Philip given us a second chance? It really sounded quite conclusive. What you said backstage? Yes, it did, didn't it? Has she... Are we still working with her? That's such a massive relief. <coughs> I thought, well, 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 I don't know what I thought, that I was done for. That it was all over. James and I, James and I thought that you were some sort of fraud. <laughs> Where is Philippa? Is she here somewhere? No. No, she's not here. Philippa and I have had a professional disagreement. Oh, God. Oh, no. She's fired us. No, 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 no. I wouldn't say fired. It's such an ugly word. No. <laughs> it's a professional disagreement. She's passed off. She's dead? What? No! You said passed on! As in not here. It's been a professional disagreement. She, she, she shot off. You shot her? There's more than a professional disagreement. That's agreement for life in prison. Will you stop that? <laughs> she had to shoot off on account of the professional disagreement. So it'll just be you. Listening to me. So we have been fired. I already said that we haven't been. It's more that our collaborative efforts with Philip. You left that there. <laughs> <laughs> it's more that our collaborative efforts with Philip have been put on hold. A long hold, possibly. One can even argue it was a permanent hold. And this hold is all due to a particular thing that Philippa was very clear was down to us, both of us equally. So we're in trouble? Of course not! We can still put a show on. True, it'll be a bit harder, a bit more costly. We'll have to find all the actors and personnel on our own, do all the marketing ourselves, and it's much more likely to garner no public interest at all. <laughs> so of course we can still do it! No, no, no! You're so negative. I'm not yet flirty, and it's over. And James, James, it's over for him too. I might never see hmm. James again. Amelia, listen to me. Come on, it's all right, listen to me. We have to put another show on to prove to all the doubters that Selfridge Thomason is still the biggest spark since the Big Bang. And for that show to work, <laughs> You need to listen to what's in here. My heart? My, my spirit? Your undying devotion and amazement felt for me! Use that now and listen to these ideas of all classics, all with Selfridgean injections. Sit down, sit down, sit down. We picture this. We bring the people Macbeth. Selfridge, Philippa has fired us. James is going to leave. I keep telling you not to use the word fired. It was a professional disagreement and Philip was not here anyway. She might have died. <laughs> <laughs> As I was saying, in this version of Macbeth, Macbeth wins. Macbeth can't win. He's the antagonist. 
Or is he the hero the audience haven't realised was on stage the whole time? The audience would never want to invest in What do you know about the audiences? I bet you never sat and clapped in your life. Anyway, they'll love him. Once he wins the dance competition at the school disco. <laughs> <laughs> the leader's party. The three popular girls predict uh, no one cares about witches stirring stew on stage, so they're cut as well. Selfridge? No. No! Alright, fine. We won't do my groundbreaking production of Macbeth. How about this then? We bring a people, a fellow. Selfridge, what are we doing here? Just pay attention, will you? In this version of Othello, Desdemona <laughs> is a man. <laughs> Not an awful idea. Could probably work. Called Des. No, no, you're a sweet, delicate, great upon heart to go by Des. You mean a Des in a fish and chip shop or a dining princess teller? She, he, he can't be Des. We can't have coffee with her. Oh, Othello would also be white. <laughs> no, no, sorry. We cannot do that. You want a fellow to be white. It describes the whole point of the play. Why? It's inclusive. <laughs> a fellow, as far as I'm concerned, as plays go, is a bit racially charged. So why not let a white man play a fellow? It's fair. <laughs> These ideas are insane. Well, all you've suggested so far is Cockney Othello, and that's not exactly a sell-out concept. Cockney Othello. <laughs> Set in Spitalfield. <laughs> <laughs>
BBC Radio Aha, the oh, secret yeah. government radio show. What is the word from our today's sponsor? Abdicate. Semi 5.5. It's one o'clock, so that means it's time for Pew Crime Time Radio. And here we have our guest and well esteemed cannabis dealer, Mr. Reed Dacted! Mr. Dacted, you are here to tell us about your extensive experience in cultivating marijuana. Welcome to the show! <laughs> Monty Don! Monty Don? <laughs> Monty Don? The Don of what? I don't know. Drag that bed over here. I don't know what you're doing. Oh, Monty Don. Uh, yeah, yeah, Monty Don, Monty Don, yeah. Monty Don. <laughs> the gardener. Oh, yes, uh, Monty Don. Wait. Monty Don? Yes, Monty Don. <laughs> so, so you don't grow weed? Is this one out? <laughs> yeah. Yes. No. 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 <laughs> no weed. No. Well, Mr. Don, there's been a rather silly mistake. Lamentable. Just awful. A real lapse of professionalism. A corporate gap. <laughs> That's all right then. I'm going to go now. No. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. No, no, no. 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 No, no, Mr. Don, we, we can't. We just can't. Hold <laughs> <laughs> on, bring me here. Dare to expose, expose, to accuse me of going narcotics. No one let me leave. Mr. Don, this is a secret show. You know where our studio is. I was blindfolded. Yes. You, you know what kind of stuff we broadcast with? Excuse me. Pew! You even know our names. Um, actually, LSE, no, it doesn't really know our names. At no point, in any point, Alice, have we told him our names, Alice. So therefore, <laughs> I really would worry about this one. <laughs> well, now we really can't let you go. <laughs> so, I don't know who you think you are, that you just kidnapped me in the cold of night, forced me into a plastic bag, and bring me to this dungeon, a studio that you lunatics and criminals operate from. I'm tired, I'm scared, but now I'm furious. I demand you let me go. If not, I'll show myself out. Bang, bang, bang! <laughs> You're listening to Crime Time Radio. Lock <laughs> <laughs> the door. Sorry. Then those must be new breasts. <laughs> <laughs> that, once more, was Rebecca French with her version of Summertime. Rebecca French, Summertime. A girl, a season, and a nationality. But now, we have something for you, ladies and gentlemen. Oh, yes, we do. We have something, someone, very special. Someone remarkable. Someone. Mm whose artistry touches me like no other. Someone who... <coughs> who evokes emotion like no artist I have ever heard in my life. My measly life. Listening to his silky, dulcet tones just reminds me that I'm nothing but grease. Grease! Not fit for him to fry his lunch in, but how I would accept the honour, the honour if he were to consider me, or at least hold me in his mouth a while so that I could inch my way towards those divine vocal cords as he spoke, or God granting, sang. Oh. What I would give to be swallowed <laughs> by a man one million times better than me. <laughs>
please welcome a man whose shoes I am not fit to scrape clean with my front teeth! <laughs> <laughs>
And worst of all, you did it while I was tipsy, thereby costing me any goodwill I'd earn myself. And now you return to apologise. I'm, I'm sorry, Salford, but it simply has to be done. You can't ever go forwards without accepting where you truly stand in the first place. <laughs> Go forwards. Go forwards. Who's going forwards here, Amelia? According to you, there's no hope for me. You would sell more tickets to anything I, than anything I would put on currently if you buried me centre stage at the Dominion Theatre and invited the audience one by one to urinate on my head. <laughs> and as for you, you must be bewildered if you're going anywhere without me. So, I'm in the clear, am I? You're probably finished too. Right. Wonderful encouragement from the boss. Lovely. Unless you were buried on stage with me, if they stacked the coffins on top of each other, that would be progress upwards, wouldn't it? Well, the sad itself is just a shocking revelation to you. It wasn't to anyone else. You needed a wake-up call. Well, I am awake. Congratulations on that score, sir. If I'm ever in a deep, unbreakable coma and need a good shaking, I'll know exactly who to call. Meanwhile, however, I shall remain beneath the desk and return to not being awake. Come on, no one knows that your work's gone to shit like Amelia and I. Don't say anything, because when I get a laugh at watching actors attempt to give birth to the concept of courage on stage in your version of Mother Courage and Her Children, fully nude too. You become a laughing stock selfish, which is probably why no one wants to talk about the work I do. You need to ask yourself some fucking serious questions. Well, I have been asking myself some very serious questions. Let me answer them for you. Yes, James, I have put on weight. No, James, you may not borrow any money. Yes, James, you can make love to my wife, but do please remind her I'm a total failure as you thrust your encore bow, won't you? Oh, Fred, come on from our No! Look, we brought something for you to look at. Amelia called me to hers last night. You haven't slept. What on earth do you need? It's. It's. It's, it's ideas. An idea. An idea for what? An idea that could save your career if you accept any saving, which it very much does. An idea that can stop us from walking out. What? Walk, walk out? On me? <laughs> but James, if you walked out, it would be like my shoelace coming undone. I can retire a shoelace. For you, on the other hand, walking out would be equivalent to death, irreversible death. You're not Jesus. And you are. I want the selfish version of the Passion of the Christ by the moment. This time Jesus doesn't come back and we're all screwed. It's a tragedy, right? With hilarious consequences. Or maybe, get this one, right? He does come back, put a Rambo star, and he pulls out a Shiva, and he kills all the Romans. Let me tell you something, Selfish. Oh, well, tell me something, James. Go on. Without me, there's only the best fucking Jerusalem backdrop for that set. He'd be banned from theatres up and down the country. Oh, and that's why everyone talks about you all the time, is it? You might as well be in Jesus' tomb, James. No one knows who you are. Savage! Just, just look at what we've come up with. A sketch show? Yes. You want me to put on a sketch show? Yes, I, I want us to... I've never written, directed, or even considered a sketch show. You want me to do something I've never done before? Just say you must yes. Alright. James and I were down anything we thought would be funny, really. Now sit down, Mika. Stay standing then. Yes, you will. <laughs> <laughs> Why a sketch show? I mean, sketch shows always struck me as being unprofessional, <laughs> cheaply written, done by writers who can't focus on a given theme or narrative for longer than it takes them to mention their English degrees in casual conversations. <laughs> <laughs> there have been many great sketch shows, and, and many a great driver. Um, Markham and Wise, Monty Python, the, the, the Lancaster University Comedy Institute. They are good, yes. <laughs> <laughs> but we'd be disadvantaged. We wouldn't even have someone to hand out the little ice creams in the interval. This is wasted time. When did we do what? Lurking beneath the desk instead? Oh, I remember, I remember what you said to me last night. <laughs> Along the lines of people knowing your name. I know you're a tipsy, but there's truth in that, no? People hear that name, and then they think of glitz and glamour and success. Well, according to your boyfriend over there, my name is synonymous with, synonymous with failure. No different than erectile dysfunction. James, this is my... Selfish, listen. Your friend Felicity may have 
plummeted down a very steep stairwell, hitting its head on every step along the way. But your name still carries weight. If we get word around that the selfish Thomas and his planning a sketch show, people might listen. People might even be excited. Why a sketch show exactly? Different. It's funny. I mean, it's not Oedipus juggling his own eyes funny, but it's funny <laughs> that people will laugh because they want to and they know it's right to. Plus, there won't be many on at the moment, if any at all. That's true. I wouldn't know where to begin writing this thing. I... maybe... I think we could help you. What? I could maybe... Immediately help you write it. She's been working with you for too long to not done any actual work. She's written all of this and it's good stuff. Not me, her. Give her a chance. Put your arrogance to one side and... Let her shine for once. Working with the selfish Thomason isn't a bad place to start. Yes. 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 You're right. Of course I'm right. Oh yes. Yes. Thank you, selfish. Thank you, James. I can promise I can. Yes. <laughs> I forgot for a moment that I am Alfred Thomas, and how could I have forgotten that I am he? James, very warm up for you, go make some tea while I cook up the cleverest, most funny stuff you've ever read in your life, with Amelia's help. Oh, James, the kettle's a bit broken, some drunken idiot was bashing it around last night. Um, it's not boiling very fast, but when it's all done, bring it through. The mauve teapot, I think. Now, Amelia, time to learn from the best. Funny humour. Let's not forget his version of No Exit, which he states in the Mirror Maid. Absolute nightmare to stay. It's an absolute nightmare. Yeah, that hurts to watch Thomas. Can you imagine performing it? You can just see your face reflected from everywhere. You can see yourself internally dying from about five different <laughs> angles. Well, the best one, right? Like, the worst time was when he tried to. What? I haven't uh, gone too far yet. That wasn't too far. No, 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 we did it. I, I just. Just what? Just wanted to thank you. <laughs> That's what the selfish is for a few years now, but what for though? Just, just for having the courage to ask selfish to give me a chance. Well, I don't know if he's given you a chance yet. It might take a bit more convincing. Well, but whatever. What's important though is that it's so nice to know I have you on my side. But, but I've had you on my side the whole time. Yeah. Are you two coming or not? I mean, first you tell me you're taking me outside to people watch because you swear it helps, and then you don't come. When are we leaving? Well, no good to keep the boss waiting. James, wait. Waiting. Very happy to wait. Honestly, thank you. You're the reason I have a chance. Well, you deserve it. You've got real talent. Take it, job. Show them how good you are. Um, right. Okay. I'm going to go now. <laughs> oh, come on! Oh, there you are. Where's the other one? Let's go! By the time we've left, the greatest sector of this generation will have been written already by the people next door. 
God knows what they are writing and we're not. For breakfast, where is the breakfast? We appear to have run out. Life is meaningless. <laughs> 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 single caramel mocha latte and half a bagel. Mm. Mustn't make myself hungry. I know what I like. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, <laughs> as I was saying, this is repossession of the depression, or repo of the depot, <laughs> <laughs> as I like to call it. Well, with my help, you can all defeat the sands that is, that is bringing you down so much. And get back to your normal, happy, lovely, cute, little selves. <laughs> now, I should say, if you've got confused, you might be looking for repossession of the dead, which is a class where you can reanimate very dead corpses <laughs> and bring them back to their normal, happy, lovely, cute, little selves. <laughs> so, yes, if you've got confused, repossession of the dead is not here. That's actually next door. <laughs> <laughs> is a teachable moment. <laughs> what we can learn from that is that we all make mistakes, but mistakes are always fixable, even when someone has died. <laughs> anyway guys, what we'll be discussing in today's session is <gasps> grief. Grief. Because when people die, it could be a real source of sadness, <laughs> can't it, guys? <laughs> yeah, it can. Oh, it can. Huh. So, but 
you, I mean, you know, you might have a chance if you were at the repossession of the dead class, you might be able to bring them back. But you're not. <laughs> you're here. Which is just so wholesome and warm, don't you agree, guys? Oh, you're all so cute. <laughs> oh, and you're all so brave for being here. You know that, guys? Oh, yes, you are. Oh, you are so very brave. <gasps> guys, another teachable moment. Friends are more important than dead relatives. <laughs> People who are alive can talk to you. Whereas if they're dead, they can't. <laughs> oh, oh, Ahab. What? It's okay. We're going to be discussing very sensitive topics for the entirety of this course. So if it does get too much for anyone here to bear, it's okay to just let it all out. For example, they got my morning coffee wrong at Starbucks today. <laughs> and let me tell you, I'm not a morning person without it. <laughs> so, and you can probably guess this, uh, the inside of my car looked like a shipwreck. So, if it does get too much for anyone here, it's okay to just let the blood water go. But anyway, Ahab, talk to us. It's important we all talk. What's the matter? The whole crew died in a shipwreck. Oh, oh God! They never found the bodies. No, no, they did. No bodies. No bodies. I can see them now. Where? Where did you get to, lad? Where? Where? <laughs> <laughs> well, okay. Thank you, Ahab. Well, now, we have all got to give a hundred percent to be fair and loving to each other, haven't we, guys? We're all in this together. No one should be left with a sinking feeling. <laughs> Session. Instead, we should all feel like we've found that. <laughs> now, one way to deal with grief when it gets too heavy to bear is by finding a happy place. Yes? What's a happy place? Oh, great question there, Steph. A happy place is a place that calms us down. It might be a place we can literally go to, or just a place we can think about. But everyone has one, I can promise you that. So, it's like a tapeworm, but bigger. Uh, not quite, but I can vibe with that. <laughs> Big, slippery, slithery boy tapeworm all up inside of you. <laughs> Unfurling like a great meaty, slippery sunflower. Spreading <laughs> the happiness. <laughs> Try it, Step. What's your happy place? My happy place? <laughs> yeah. A place that you can be all the time. For example, mine would be either Venice or the Starbucks opposite the gym that I go to with a view of the boys on the treadmills. <laughs> Lit. <laughs> uh, yes, but you, Steph, you track. What's your happy place? My happy place. I like, I like the forest after it rains. Oh, how cosy! 
Because all the worms come out of the ground. <laughs> <laughs> I like worms, worms are cool. <clears throat> Steph, uh, remind me why you're here today. Oh, um, I've been struggling in my love life because of a history of partners who suffer from, you know. <laughs> Erectile dysfunction. Oh, oh, of course. The old difficulty. Yes. <laughs> the old floppy jalopy. The old Cuban missile crisis. <laughs> he hence, hence the worms. <laughs> um, so, excuse me, 
What? Um, I don't need your money, sir. I'm not homeless. I just keep it. I don't need it! I swear, if those two don't get back with that tea soon, I'm going to do something. So, excuse me, please, I'm sorry to interrupt your charity, but I don't need this money. I'm not homeless. Hey? I'm giving you your donation back. Spend it on whatever a person like you would spend ten pence on. Cigarettes? Infinite copies of Blast and Furious? Soap? I don't need it. I'm not homeless. I'm sorry, mate. I think you will be needing that money more than me. You're sitting on the pavement. That doesn't qualify me as homeless. You look homeless. I wouldn't have given you the money if you didn't. <laughs> Do you know who I am? Some homeless bloke sitting on the pavement. <laughs> no. I am Selfridge Thomason. Who? Selfridge Thomason. The Selfridge Thomason. Come again? Selfridge Thomason, I'm not a homeless man! Look, mate, fuck it up. I've, I've done my bit, alright? I've, I've, I've given the homeless lunatic some, you know, change to go and get his head checked out, so you hold on to it, alright? <laughs> fuck me, the fucking lunatics you get in London these days. You know what? Use that money to go and get some toothpaste to clean your mouth out of all the shit you're spouting. Fuck me, fucking lunatic. <laughs> <laughs> Sit on the pavement, Selfridge. It'll be great for ideas, Selfridge. I swear to God. That's all right. It will get better. Do you know what? I think I'm going to start accepting the money you people wave in my face much more cordially from now on. Maybe I'll force a tear if it helps your good deed feel all the more beneficial. Please, don't forget me, Mr. Good Homeless Man. Spare me some change from your coffee and croissant breakfast or whatever it was. I'm terribly sick. The doctors have told me I won't survive another week. I developed hyperpiles, a symptom of sitting for too long on the grime and the boot-trampled streets of London except other than anywhere else there was available. Please, won't you help me? Some change or a good smack around the head just to feel something. I know it goes some way. <sighs> right. Well, I'm sorry, but I've done my bit. Now, I really must be off to school. Now, you must understand I'm so sick and homeless and in need of... School? You don't look like a student. No, I'm the head teacher. Now, if you'll excuse me, I really must be going. People watching. What a waste of my time. Amelia doesn't understand anything. What, the ideas just drop in front of me, do they? At least I'm making a profit. <laughs> Yes. What do you want? Can I have some tracing paper? 
Uh, tr tracing paper, of course! You know this is an English exam, right? Fine. I'll go, I'll go fetch you some. You cretin. <laughs> Hey, I've got two cans of coke on me right now. <laughs> Let's see who can open those the loudest. Shoot around the path first, anyway. Wait, hold on. Three, two, wait, one, one two, no! What the? Ready. I have all the pedigrees, 
all the all the mixed breeds, everything. I can't wait for the business to get started. This just in, cats have taken over the world. Humanity has submitted to its feline overlords. Come on, Andrew, into the cage. This is my pet shop now. Oh, man. <laughs> I'm never going to fit into one of those cages. someone approaches you and engages you in a polite but unassuming conversation pops that million dollar question but that never happens. Way of the industry I suppose it never will happen. That scenario will never just drop itself in front of me. Um, Jake, Jake, um, this gentleman right here is writing a sketch. So as both of these guys are writing a sketch show. Oh, okay, that's cool. I'm running this <laughs> is a cast. Well, you do have to have actors to act the thing. Otherwise, it wouldn't be a play. It'd be more of a... Pack up the toys! Oh, <laughs> you see, Jake, uh, that sort of... Wit! <laughs> About you. Say, how would you like to audition for the show we're writing? Me? Audition? To be in a play? Like a real play? On a stage? We don't have a stage yet! 
We will, we will have a stage. It will be a stage. I can promise you there will be a stage. If there's no stage, I won't be there either. I, I, I like to think you, you'd be. Oh, well, I, oh my God, this is it. It's really happening. You're the scenario. The scenario. Oh my God, oh my God. An audition, a real audition for a play. A real play. And yes, a real play, Jake, that you could be in. A real play that I could be in. If you get past the audition if process. I get past the audition process. So, Jake, what do you say? Well, let me put it like this. Who am I? This 
just it. Flowers have been banned. Jerusalem. Oh, that is a 
show. Congratulations, Maxwell. You are the winner of tonight's episode. And for your prize, a shot of malaria. And thank you very much for watching, ladies and gentlemen. But that is all we have time for this week. And uh, goodbye! Some of the funniest ever seen. It was Amelia's decision not to use them all. Twenty not enough jobs in a row is enough to make anyone look insane. I don't think so. Five of them had the same punchline. No, they didn't. Knock knock. Who's there? I'm not too sure. Well, off my property with you. Ah, oh, I forgot about that one. <laughs>
Of course it's not true. Yes! What else do you think would happen, Selfridge? Look at yourself. Look at who you are. Bickering with your set designer. When there isn't even a set to design. And arguing your writing is in fact funny enough to feature in a sketch show. No one has seen a draft or let alone taken up. If you still had the success you once did, would you be standing here? I... I don't know! You wouldn't! Philippa would be calling you up every day to ask when the next great show is. You'd be in your office right now, or, or having lunch with whatever massive personality you made of. You'd not be here. You are in trouble! And you're not helping yourself! Maybe things have gone a little bit wrong recently. Longer than recently. <clears throat> applause! Applause is what I bleed in. And it seems my drip supply is running dreadfully low. Um, I don't want to be a failure. I, I, I don't. I don't understand what happened. I don't want to exit pursued by fear. You've written something. 
Selfridge never wrote anything original in his life. Well, I wouldn't call his original work writing. More like butchering, but in words. We... We wrote it. Both of us. You are his assistant, yes? Have you had any dancing lessons since we last met? May I? Sorry? Your script, I'd like to look at it. Uh, sure. Uh, it's a sketch show. Hmm. Sketch show? And you wrote this? We wrote it. Yes. Both of us. Thank you. 